In this lesson we'll cover tuplets, ties, flams, drags and rolls and we'll cover a lot of exercises to demonstrate these ideas. Firstly, tuplets. A tuplet is something we write when we want to squeeze a number of notes into a beat which don't mathematically fit. To write a tuplet we simply write the notes we want, beam them together and write the number of notes underneath. Note that a tuplet of three crotchets fills the same length as a minim, a tuplet of three quavers fills the same space as a crotchet and a tuplet of three semiquavers fills the same space as a quaver. In this example I've written a short section of march-like drumming which sounds like this. Now if we add a tuplet in of three quavers at the end it sounds like this. In this next example, you see tuplets of two squeezed into a 6 8 scenario. Sounds like this. So, for that single bar, it sounds like we've gone back into 2 4. Now, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of common patterns of tuplets. Firstly, if we have semiquavers in groups of sixes in a 2 4 context, they sound like this. If we make the first half of every six a quaver, we end up with this. And the inverse of that sounds like this. Next, we're going to talk about rolls. We write them like this. You'll notice three reiteration marks on a minim and a crotchet roll and anything less than a crotchet in value, we only write two. If unsure on rolls, we want you to take the rolls out and play the rhythm only. Then you can identify where the roll will start and stop and put them back in the second time. Here's an exercise to practice. I'll give you two bars in. Ready? One, two, two, two. You'll notice that one of the rolls on the last stave starts on the AND of two and finishes on the AND of the next one in the next bar. Next we'll try an exercise in 6-8. Try to pay attention to the sticking. Ready? One, two, two, two. So a normally written roll has no accent at the start and finishes with an unaccented tap. If we add an accent to the beginning of the roll, it's played like this. There's an audible tap at the beginning. And accents can be added to the end of rolls like this. Many rolls can be linked together, but we only tap the rhythm that is accented. A one, two, Two, two. Here's an exercise to practice. I'll give you two bars. One, two, two, two. Flams are written like this. You'll notice we've got an object note and then a smaller grace note preceding it. It's important to note that the grace note is written above or below the line to indicate which stick to play it on. Here's an exercise to practice. This grid is similar to the accent grid we played in a previous lesson, but the flam moves around instead of the accent. I'll give you two bars in. One, two, two, two.
Here's a similar exercise with semi-quavers. Ready? A one, two, two, two. Drags are written like this. You have two grace notes before the object note. If you're unsure how to play any of these, there'll be links in the description boxes below. Here's a similar quaver drag grid. Ready? One, two, two, two. Now we've got an exercise combining flams and drags. Ready? One, two, two, two. This next exercise incorporates flams, drags, rolls, accents and graded dynamics. I'll give you two bars in. A one, two, three, two, two, three. Now I'm going to talk about ties. If a composer doesn't want you to play every note in a bar, he can pop in rests. But sometimes that looks a bit untidy. So we can write a rhythm and then put a tie over the top. Look at this example. The rhythms seem quite simple. They sound like this. And the second. Now say I want you to take away the first semiquaver of each of the second beats of those rhythms. They look like this. But they can be made to look tidier with a tie like this. When you see a tie, it simply means don't play the note the tie is tied to. You'll notice that we only find ties crossing crotchet beats or bar lines. To demonstrate, look at this exercise now. First I'll play it without the ties in, and then I'll add them in the second time. Ready? One, two, two, two. And with the ties, one, two, two, two. We'll do the same with the next exercise. So first time without the ties. One, two, two, two. and this time with the ties in. One, two, two, two. The next exercise is in six, eight, and we'll do the same practice. First time without the ties. One, Two, two, two.
and this time with the ties in. A one, two, two, two. If you got that all right, well done, you're ready to progress to lesson 11.